did not wake up this morning thinking I'm making a reactionary video to the Minister of Education here in the province of Saskatchewan's interview on CTV Regina yesterday morning, but here we are. I am a teacher who is currently not on contract. I am at home raising my kids, but I was on contract from 2007 until fall of, sorry, spring of 2023, just last spring, with a maternity leave in there. So I've been in the classroom for the better part of 15 years, since 20, 2007. I've also served on leadership positions within teachers associations and professional advisory committees during that time. So those are kind of the perspectives I'm bringing to this ludicrous interview that I saw. So this man talked in this interview about how he felt that the STF, the Saskatchewan Teachers Federation, is trying to undercut local school boards autonomy and authority by defining class size and composition in our contracts. And oh my goodness, that is such a reach because he says, you know, we want that dealt with at a local level because across this great province of ours, there's such a diverse amount of needs. Regina isn't Creighton, isn't Rosetown, isn't North Battleford, he says. And good sir, you are correct. They are all different, but you know what they all have in common? that they don't have the ability to set their own mill rates to generate revenue for their own initiatives because in 2009, the SAS party removed local mill rates, made it provincial, and then distributed the funds. So if you want a local body to take care of something, you have to give that autonomy back to them. And if you're not willing to do that, then all you are doing is saying words with no meaning behind them. He goes on to talk about the pilot projects that the government of Saskatchewan has put out last week to deal with classroom size and complexity as though it's a brand new issue! It is not a brand new issue, it is such an old issue! Well, like, a few years old. Because in March 2020, before the pandemic shut the schools down, teachers were having job action on these same talk talking points. So March 2020, I remember such a hoopla over the Provincial Basketball Association provincial basketball championship called hoopla being canceled people were mad that hoopla was canceled they were mad the teachers were working to rule which is a fun word for just doing what you're contracted to do and no more i think we call it quiet quitting today so teachers quiet quit a little bit and people got mad but that really does show you how long this classroom size and complexity thing has been going on. People really, I, I, in my discussions with people, they think it's a thing since the pandemic. And I always say, no, these issues existed before the pandemic. It just ripped the bandaid off and made everybody see them and everybody aware of them. But these things very much existed before. And a lot of them are due to things outside of school's control, like the amount of time in a school that you spend dealing with things that are bullying issues from on social media and things that are just so outside of our control, a lot. But I digress. The real thing is that classroom size and complexity, they're not new initiatives. initiatives. And the fact that you've only started last week to put pilot projects together, that doesn't look like you're dealing in good faith to me. That looks like you're trying to show a public that maybe isn't really paying attention how great you are when in fact you're not doing much. Because previously when we've had these initiatives and these committees, nothing's come from them. That's why teachers aren't really like, woohoo, they're gonna do things. No, we're thinking like, again, they're gonna do this committee, it's not gonna show anything, and we're gonna be back where we started. A lot of people have a lot of ideas of it, but the biggest thing is you, you can't have the number of kids with the number of issues in a room and expect learning to happen. I digress again. Then he goes on to talk about how teachers have left the bargaining table and that one really got me because it was like an abusive relationship. So teachers came in with their asks for bargaining and said these are the things that are important to us we have about 10 10 points one of them is salary and government made an opening offer of a salary increase and teachers kind of said that's what about these nine other things we're talking about and then government said we're going to plaster your salary offer along with incorrect information about teacher salaries across billboards in their whole province and we're not going to budge on any of the other issues and then we're going to make you look real bad because we're going to lie about how much money you make and then make it look like we're offering a whole bunch more. I'll come back to that. 
So teachers didn't so much leave the table as say, like, this isn't a discussion. You're not discussing. You haven't changed your mind. In fact, I recall seeing something about the STF presidents offering to kind of put a bargaining table on the CTV stage. And even in this interview, the CTV news in anchor said, well, do we need to do this on TV? And, and Cockrell just sidestepped that. They don't want to do it in front of people because I feel like if bargaining was to happen publicly in front of people, they would be seen for what I believe they're doing. And it's it's not bargaining. It's just saying, this is what you get. 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 Take it. And then at the end, he says the teachers asked for a 23.5% wage increase, which is not, again, accurate. They asked for 2% per year over four years, plus cost of living. Um, again, I've taught since 2007. I have actually lost purchasing power in my career, quite a bit of it, because not once has any raise that we've gotten kept up with inflation. And again, I know that that's kind of in keeping with a regular Joe, but a rising tide raises all ships. And wanting better for kids and wanting better for teachers, historically across any, what's the word I'm looking for, area that's done this, you see a return on investment when you have quality education and we don't have it and we're not seeing that return on investment. And for a province that keeps touting itself as a has province, they're not acting like it. They're not in good faith and they're not telling the truth. So I said I'd come back to the, the billboards and that's where I'm gonna end. So the billboards in Saskatchewan, they were saying things about how teachers were offered a, a very fair deal, 7% raise, the average teacher salary in Saskatchewan's 92,000 and that's above the Canadian average. Only there's, there's not really a way that that's true. So in Saskatchewan, we have three classes for teachers and then we have steps, we have steps and we have classes. It's kind of confusing, but the information that I'm referencing is available for public consumption on the STF website. So class four is a bachelor degree teacher and you start at step one when you're a first year teacher and you can work all the way to step 11. Step 11 is the top of the salary grid. So once you're there, you're not getting another raise unless it's negotiated in something like what's happening right now. So class four, you're a teacher with a bachelor's degree and you're at step 11, you're not making $92,000 a year. And these, these, these numbers that you get on the STF website, these are pre-tax. So when you add tax on there and then you add all your other stuff, your take home, you know, it's 60% of what it looks like. So then you can move to class four. So that's a teacher with two degrees, whether it's two bachelors, a bachelor and it's two year masters. That's where I fall. And again, I've got 15 years experience. So I'm past that step 11. I'm 11 plus. Um, yeah, that if you're step 11, so 11 years teaching experience and those two degrees, you can make that $92,000 a year. And, and I mean, I'm referencing 2022 numbers because that's what was referenced in these billboards. Then you can move to step six, which is like three degrees. It's not the best system, but it's the one we have. So three degrees and 10 or 11 years of um, experience and you can make above 92. So you have three, sorry, yeah, three out of 33 areas where teachers can make above $92,000 a year. And most people think of an average as you've added up all the numbers and you've divided by however many areas and that's your average. And there is zero way that that happens with the numbers I've just talked about zero way. So there's another couple ways you can measure t central tendency, mean, median, mode. I would love to see how they got that average. And I really would. Like, again, I'm a math teacher and these numbers aren't adding up. Every teacher I know wants better in Saskatchewan. We're a career of people-pleasing women for the most part. And it's really hard to stand up and say, this isn't enough. It really is. But when your government's blatantly lying and not telling the truth, you kind of have to. That's my bottom line.